Hello, Twitch chat, and hello if you're watching this on YouTube. I want to just do a uh, quick, a brief, uh, how do I say this? Um, I found out what's causing the delays with uh, MTGA video uploads, so we're actually going to delay those all the way until the first of the year, which is only in 11 days or 12 days away, so not really a big deal. But I just wanted to let you guys know, so um, I know I did just post a schedule to my YouTube channel with what we're going to do. So in, <clears throat> I'm sorry, in replacement for those videos on Thursday, uh, or on Wednesdays when we would do normally do our first uh, arena, we're going to do a discussion video just like Monday. And then Fridays, we're most likely going to do, depending, I haven't recorded a video yet, this Friday might be an unboxing but next Friday, I may do just a deck, uh, deck tech discussion video on a deck I'm currently building and why I like it and, you know, how it's running and, uh, you know, basically that. Okay, but right now, today, um, we have our discussion video that was supposed to be posted Wednesday because there was no MTGA because I tried to upload the file and I saw it was lagging and I found the culprit. I found out it's uh, a faulty, well, a couple things. I'm going to upgrade some pieces in my uh, hardware, my computer, and also a better internet connection is going to help me because I'm currently using a wireless connection on my uh, desktop when I could be using a uh, wired connection. So that will help. So let's go ahead today and uh, I gotta get that one yard out of the way. It's only 9.30, but I was up at four today, so you know it is. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna do some Ravnica Allegiance spoilers and discuss. All right, the first one is Frenzy, Arnix, Arnix, can we click these to make them, ooh, I don't want to do that, because I kind of look it off the page here, hold on, I mean, okay, cool, okay, multicolored creature common, a one green, one red, and two colorless for a cat beast creature with the ability riot, the green and red, this seems to be their keyword, um, this creature ends the battlefield with your choice of a plus one counter or haste, <coughs> It seems like a stupid good uh, ability. Uh, it will have Trample. And um, it's a 3-3 three, three for 4. And you can pay 4 colorless, 1 red, and 1 green. And this card gains plus 3 until end of turn. Um, if you're running this card, I don't really see people running this card. But if you do t uh, end up running this card, I assume if you get it out late game, it goes... Uh, you can tap its ability to make it a 6-3 a and then use uh, its riot ability to haste. But I don't really see it being uh, its common, so you know. Gizmo. Gizmo. People cannot watch a video if all they hear is meow, meow, meow in the background. I actually don't know if you guys can hear him uh, with how good my... Uh, I've, I, used, I do music, so I have a very expensive microphone. So usually it picks up a pretty... Uh, it, even the littlest noises it can pick up even when my um even when my gain is down so i'm not entirely sure if, if you can hear him but you probably can all right the next card we're going to go over is a rare so it will probably be seen gruel spellbreaker one green one red and one colorless for a three three with the ability riot trample and as long as it is your turn you and gruel spellbreaker have hexproof i don't like <clears throat> As long as it's your turn, I get the point of it, so it just doesn't have hexproof. And it can't be blown up on your turn. So that's kind of nice. Um, hexproof doesn't really stop a lot of a lot of the cards that would be used on your turn that I could think of. Uh, Settle the Wreckage, um, Nova Cleansing, I think that's the name of the card. Um, so yeah, I mean, I understand that you know they can't target it on your turn with a... Uh, with any um, any abilities or any spells, but still overall, I mean, I think it's amazing though. It's a three three for three with trample, um, and it could be a four four or have haste on the turn, and it has hexproof on your turn. So I think it's a overall a really nice card. Um, I want to see how the riot mechanic works all together. You know, with the with the mythics in the set that'll propel these. Um, I'm sure. Um, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> we're going to skip down here a little bit real quick to look at this card, which this card is a green-blue. 
Uh, the Simic Descendants, we talked about this before. Green, blue. Put a 1 1 counter on target creature you control for a green, blue, and a colorless. And whenever one or more plus 1 counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on this card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if this card is 20 or more counters, you win the game. Um, I see this card getting blown up pretty early. Or letting it get to like 15 or 16 and then waiting to blow it up. Um, I also see people holding counters <clears throat> to make sure it doesn't happen. But that's interesting. You'd actually, because that's green, blue. So you'd actually have to run red, green, blue uh, f to use your plus ones with that card. I don't know if it would be an effective strategy or not. But most likely not. But we'll see. Uh, this card, uh, they do have the English version out. It's just not on here. I can't remember its name. But uh, it destroys one creature or planeswalker. I'm pretty sure. Oh, artifact, creature, or planeswalker. Uh, yeah, artifact, creature, planeswalker um, for three costs. So it's kind of like merger, except it doesn't just target creatures. It also targets. Um, but being two black and a red, y I mean, it kind of could mana screw you. So we'll see. Um, yeah, very good card. Uh, very good card overall. If you're running Rakdos, um, I mean, I, I'll run it. <laughs> it's that simple. Especially if you, uh, I haven't seen the fetch lands for this, or not check lands for this, but I ha uh, obviously that they will have the new shock lands. The black and red shock lands will come out in the set. So, I mean, it won't be too impossible to get this card out and play it's playable. All right. A new merfolk creature, because why not? A green blue plus two. Merfolk wizard legendary creature. Four, 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 four. When this card enters battlefield, you, you control. Uh, when it enters battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus one counter on it, draw a card. So you're almost always going to draw a card with this. Because, you know. And then for four, a green and a blue. Adept four. If this creature has no plus one counters, put four counters on it. All right. So I already instantly see the Simic Ascendance then plus this card. Because uh, after you play your first one, you can put counters. So... Even if you play this outright, I'm pretty sure that it adds three counters instantly to your Simic. So you're, you're 3 20th of the way there. I mean, you're, what would you be? Uh, you fit, you're 15% of the way there to winning already, just getting this card and playing its ability. So that's pretty insane. And then each creature you control with a plus one counter also has trample. So this card, um, so this card, even if you, if you get it out late game where you have a lot of mana on board, this card could come out as an 8-8 eight, eight and have Trample. That's pretty insane. And you're going to draw a card because you'll have another Merfolk <coughs> and play with a plus one. That's pretty crazy. My wife uh, is getting into the game. She kind of back and forth, but she loves Merfolk, so she'll love that. Uh, Arrow Nucleus. One green, one blue, one colorless. This is a common 2-3 flyer. You can tap, or you don't even tap, you just pay two colorless, one green, one blue. Adept 1, <coughs> not exactly what I'd call. Uh, that. That's probably pretty good in draft. I don't really see it being very good in standard. Uh, there's not much to say about that card. Gate Colossus, uh, I think we talked about this card before, but we're going to go ahead and do it again. Gate Colossus, an 8 cost. This spell costs one less to cast for each gate you control. Gate classes cannot be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Whenever a gate enters battlefield under your control, you may put this card from your graveyard on the top of your deck. I like the fact that it says may here, so it's not going to force you to if you don't want to play it. And it costs one less to cast for each gate. So theoretically, four gates. Uh, you'll have four gates in play. He'll cost four. You'll be able to use four. And he'll be a four, 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 four. It can't be blocked by creatures two or less. So overall, pretty good. I don't think he's crazy good. Um, we have to see if you get any more support for the gate, the gate creatures. Uh, this set, uh, some ascendancy we just talked about. Lava coil. I don't know why that's in here. I don't know if they're making another lava coil or something. But yeah, that's in here. Um, oh, gate colossus. That's interesting. It's actually two different arts. That's pretty cool. Uh, do they have two different numbers? Oh, uh, is one a promo? Inter I'm not actually interested to see what, uh, what does that say? Uh, 232. 
232. Nope, same one. So, yeah, I think you can see foiling around this. Well, uh, probably a pro. Oh, yeah, right here. Wow. Good thing I can read. Okay, let's scale back. Let's scale back. Okay. Um, let's see this. Imperius Oligarch. Oligarch. Um, this is the set I'm actually keen to playing white creatures because of this ability right here. This is the keyword of this guild, the black and white guild. Um, so it's a 2-1 for 2 with Vigilance, and it has Afterlife. Whenever this creature dies, create a 1-1 one, one black and white spirit token with flying. That's pretty insane. So you look at this and you say, okay, it's not that great. For a 2 cost for a 2-1... It's like, eh, I mean, you have Hunted Witness, which is a one cost that makes a 1-1 one, one anyways. Granted, it's not a flyer, um, but I believe it does have Lifelink, uh, the one that comes out. But this has Vigilance. Eh, I don't love it. I think in draft it's pretty good in early play, but it is a common, so as you expect, it's not going to be crazy. The crazy ones are soon to come. Uh, Lavinia. Lavinia? Oh, did I actually say that right? Uh... Azorius Renegade, a one white and one blue legendary creature human soldier. It's a rare, so it's, a, it's bound to be good. And each opponent cannot cr cast non-creature spells with converted mana cost greater than the number of lands that player controls. Okay. So that shuts down all those treasure decks and any deck that uses tre uh, storm. The, the, the standard storm is shut down. I assume this could be used in Modern, too, to shut a lot of those decks down. So that right there is pretty nice. Whenever opponent cast a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that shuts down a crazy deck. <sighs> Just to think you could use this with Force of Will. You use this on Force of Will. And I'm pretty new to the game, but I obviously I know what that card is. So that's pretty crazy. Um... No, oh, overall, so I got two two, and I love how it says opponent. So you, so you don't reap, you don't lose anything to that. It still dies to shock. So, <laughs> uh, here's the card. Here's my favorite card of the set so far. Tinter Taker, a rare, uh, two one for for two. So yes, it does die to basic red spells. But during your turn, during your turn. Spells your opponent cast cost one more to cast, and abilities your opponent activates cost one more to activate, uh, unless they're mana abilities. So guess what? Guess what? Guess what? No turn one opt for your opponent. No turn one shock for your opponent. Uh, all the nice things they like to try, all the uh, the flashes that they like to pull, not happening. Blue players, blue players, good luck. This also has Afterlife 1 when it dies, created 1-1. One, one. I mean, this card, its ability right there was good enough, and then you give it a Afterlife 1. This card is going to be a premium card in the set. This is going to be a deck I build, uh, a creature I build deck around, like absolutely 100%. We're going to go ahead and go to Rafter Demon, because it's just a promo card. A, oh, didn't mean to click them. Oh, well. A 1 red, 1 black, and 2 colorless for a 4-2. With Speculate 3, which Speculate will be the uh, keyword for Rakdos. Uh, you may cast a spell for its Speculate cost rather than its mana cost if your opponent lost life this turn. Now, obviously Speculate cost is higher on this card than less. But when it enters Battlefield, if its cost was paid, each opponent discards a card. So, yeah, that's kind of nice, kind of helpful. But it's a common, so I don't think anyone's going to be really running it. Uh, it it's a 4-2. Even if you got it for a Speculate cost... If you're paying 5 for a 4-2 just to make your opponent discard a card, I don't really see. You know, might be good in draft. Not even really that good in draft. Um, decent, maybe. Um, yeah, I guess it's good in draft because for a 4, you still get the 4-2. Chances are your opponent's not going to have something to destroy it. And it's going to make your opponent ditch a card. So, hand advantage. All right. Let's see. Rick's Matty Revealer. And here's a uh, rare card for the uh for this guild so you know speculate cost will actually be good on this it is a one red one colorless for a two two pretty basic 
You can pay your spectacle cost, which is four, which is so it's double the cost, and it adds black, so you cannot run this in just red deck if you want the speculating ability. And when this card enters battlefield, discard a card, then draw a card. So um, you don't even have to run its spect spect uh, spectacle ability to get that ability to di ditch in, in pull. So that's pretty good for decks that uh, just want to mill out and just search out for those certain cards they need to win the game. Um, okay. When this card... Oh, excuse me. Second yawn. When this card, spectacle cost, was paid, instead... Oh, wait. Then draw a card. If this card, spectacle cost, was paid, instead discard your hand, then draw three cards. Okay. So if, if you're running very low on red... Uh, or, sorry. If you're running very low on cards in hand, like red often does, and this is late game or, or mid game and you've burnt out, you cast its first cost, ditch one card, or it doesn't say you have to have cards in hand, so no cards, and draw three cards. So that is not too bad for a 2-2 two, two for two. Oh, actually, it'll be a 2-2 two, two for four. So it is what it is. Got to take it or leave it. All right. Um, Simic Descendants, we just should talk about the Haunt of Hightower we've talked about. We've talked about these before... Yeah, we talked about Growth Spire. These cards look super nice as promos. Um, draw a card, you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Look, even this card, you won't even be able to use it turn two uh, on your opponent's turn if you're running uh, Tinter Taker. So, uh, just overall, very, very cool. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, thank you guys so much for the love and support. Please like, comment, subscribe, show it to your friends, and let them know that as of the first, we will be a more legitimate magic channel I, I promise that is my cats knocking over magic stuff product that we haven't opened yet nice nice anyways that's about it guys i appreciate all love and support and if you're watching on twitch right now i appreciate it i'm just learning how to build a twitch channel so <laughs> bear with me anyways that is about it so i appreciate it and bye bye